Jace and the Wheeled Warriors. Available now on DVD from Shout Factory. Let's get down to the actual review part of the review, shall we? Uh, it just comes in a standard slip case, and you have two, uh, basically two slim cases that slide in. And there you go. Nice and simple. Doesn't take up a lot of shelf space. So basically you have 33 episodes in less than the thickness of a single VHS tape. Now, to put that in perspective, I had a bunch of the original VHS tapes. And not only was it the original VHS tapes, so it's the bulkier size of VHS, but they were in like clamshells, so they took up even more space on the shelf. And each tape only had like two episodes on There was a few with five, but most of them only had one or two episodes on it. So like, you were talking a lot of shelf space. And I think total I had maybe 25 episodes in like a block of shelf space like this. So I had this, just picture the whole wideness of the screen here, reduced down to this with even more episodes. <laughs> God, I love TV on DVD. I really do. It looks better, it sounds better, and it takes up so much less space. Okay, so you got your uh, you got your just standard bookshelf case. The only complaint I have, and I'm sure this isn't typical because I've got other Shout Factory sets and this isn't a problem, is this uh, corner is a little loose. I keep having to push it back in and it keeps popping out, so it's kind of annoying. But very minor detail, whatever. Okay, so we got the, the case here with the two, uh, the two slimline cases. And uh, I showed you the the fronts. That's Jace there, of course. And then that's uh, Sawboss, who's the uh, leader of the Monster Mines. And I thought I'd uh, give you a little look on the inside. Um, just one second here. I was grabbing some clips for uh, a little bit later in the show here. So inside you got two discs. And uh, underneath the discs, just set these aside here. And then underneath the disc, you actually have a nice big uh, still from the show. Now this, of course, is uh, Un, I was describing in the previous uh, episode there, and then uh, Jace. Now, Un, one thing that um, was sort of a staple of 80s cartoons is that they would always seem to have the obligatory cute character. And the obligatory cute characters tended to be really annoying a lot of the time. <laughs> But I have to say, like, even though Oon was clearly the, the token cute comic relief character, they kept his use to a, a tasteful minimum, I think. Like, he actually did serve a purpose, and unlike a lot of those types of characters in 80s cartoons, Oon could hold his own in a fight. Like, he was still a bit of a coward and kind of stuff like that, but, well, he wasn't really a coward, he would just get scared. But he'd always face his fear and come through in the end. So, pretty tough little, uh, little guy there, Oon. Definitely puts a lot of those other comic relief characters to shame. And then uh, here, in the, uh, we got uh, here, so discs three and four, we have Herc Storm Sailor, also known as Han Solo, <laughs> and Flora, who of course is the uh, girl who is actually a plant. And uh, underneath, somebody I forgot to mention when I was going through the characters, Flora has a pet who is actually a flying fish. Literally, a flying fish named Brock. And, uh, yeah, really not much more to say about Brock than that. Uh, so, yeah, there's definitely some wacky elements to it. But you know what's really interesting? Is when you're watching it, it all makes a strange kind of sense. You just sort of... Like, all these weird, wacky, way-out-there elements just fit together in some way that is indescribable. Only on Jason the Wheeled Warriors. I can't picture any other show pulling off that kind of amalgamation of concepts and having it work so perfectly. So, basically, on the back, you have uh, the breakdown of all the episodes on each disc. It's four discs total. So there's, like, uh, I think eight or nine episodes on each disc. Dual layer, of course, so it means they can keep the bit rate at a decent rate. 
Um, that's about the limit, I think, of how many episodes you really want to be putting on a disc right there. Anything above that, you're going to notice a drop in quality. But this looks really good. Like, um, I saw the original uh, DVD release that was put out a few years ago, the single disc release, and I noticed there was some, some pretty noticeable artifacting in that, especially in the opening title sequences. And uh, while there is still a little bit of artifacting here and there, um, considering how much they put on a disc, it's pretty minimal. Like, you're really, unless you're really looking for it, you're not going to notice it. And I've said before, I'll say again, I'm always kind of forgiving when it comes to 80s cartoons because I see this all the time. People are like, oh, why isn't this show remastered? Why didn't they remaster it? People are so unrealistic when they talk about this stuff, okay? They just don't stop and think of what they're saying. Okay, first off, technically, anything that's from this era that's put out on DVD has been remastered, meaning they've taken analog recordings, transferred them to digital, made new digital masters, and then mastered the DVDs from those new digital masters. So, technically, it's been remastered, i.e., there have been new masters made, okay? But I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. You're saying, basically, why can't everything get the Voltron treatment? Well, Voltron was a really special case because, first off, Voltron was a huge, huge show, and they knew that they would sell gajillions of copies of it, so the expense was justified. For something like Jason the Wheeled Warriors, which is by comparison a lot more obscure, most modern viewers have never even heard of it and don't know anything about it. Like, I've talked to some people in my Stickham chat room about 80s cartoons, and they considered themselves pretty hardcore into 80s cartoons. I showed them this, and they're like, never heard of that one. Nope. No idea. So... Not so hardcore after all, after all, are you? But um, remastering. Yeah, it's like, no, for a show like this, they're not going to go to the added expense of digging out the original film prints from the vaults, re-editing all the episodes from the best existing film elements, and then going in and digitally cleaning up and removing every single little speck of dirt and hair and picture noise. No, you're not going to get that. When you get that on a set of an 80s cartoon, it is the exception rather than the rule. When you do get that, be glad you did because it's not going to happen very often. The only time that happens is just like huge Hollywood movies where they know they're going to sell a million copies, like literally a million copies, so they can justify the expense. Or TV shows where they know the audience of potential customers is big enough to justify that expense. It is a huge expense to do that kind of remastering and cleanup, and you're not going to see it very often. So I really wish people would get their facts straight and stop complaining when we get a nice DVD set of an obscure show like this, and they're bitching and moaning that it's not remastered. Give me an effing break. Come on. That's ridiculous. So, that aside, yes, there is some dirt, there is some dust, there is some, uh, you know, there's a couple instances where it looks like the master tapes had a couple glitches on them. It's not major f stuff, folks. These are really minor issues, and it should not deter you from picking up the set if you're a fan. The simple fact of the matter is, the master tapes are pushing 25 years old, you know? And even the best conditions of, uh, you know, hanging on to old master tapes like that, they're old, <laughs> okay? There's going to be the occasional glitch from here to there, here, here and there. But the thing is, like, the picture is beautifully time-based corrected, so it's as crisp, clean, and stable than anything you've ever seen. And let's face it, up until this, this is how Jace looked to us fans. Not this time. Enjoy the show! That should hold you. Stop him! Someone stop him! So, would you rather have that? Or would you rather have this? Yes, you thought I forgot, didn't you? Here's the opening titles to Jason the Wheeled Warriors. I know you've been waiting for it. Here it is. Check it out. Thundering across the stars to save the universe from the monster minds. Jace searches for his father to unite the magic root and lead his lightning league to victory over the changing form of Sawboss. 
wheeled warriors explode into battle. Lightning strikes. There's a power that comes from deep inside of you. It's every day reaching toward the light. And you know there's a long way ahead of you. But when your wheels get you there, things will turn out right. Just keep on turning. Don't stop the rolling. The fire is on. Real warrior. The metal drum's burning. Our wheels are moving. Real warrior. Come on, you just keep on turning. Don't stop the rolling. The fire is on. Real warrior. The metal drum's burning. Our wheels are moving. Real warrior. Real warrior. Yeah. I think the evidence is pretty, well, self-evident, <laughs> which looks better. Now, those lucky enough to have the old VHS tapes, of course, theirs wouldn't look anywhere near as bad as that first clip I showed you, but that's what the majority of us had to put up with as far as, you know, bootleg copies available while we waited for an official release. The quality of the ones floating around out there were crap, quite frankly, like a whole new definition of crap. Now, so... Uh, yeah, so overall picture quality is very good. The only audio problem I had, and I did bring this up in the forums, but unfortunately nobody else seemed to be able to confirm it, so I don't know if it's just my disc or what, but um, it, it seemed like a mastering issue rather than an authoring issue, so I suspect it is present on the, on the master disc. I don't know. But uh, the only problem I had was with episode 5, an episode called Ghost Ship, where it sounded like the... Uh, now, originally, of course, it's a 5.1 show, but it's been, uh, I guess, remixed for 5. Point, or sorry, it's a mono show. It's not originally... Yeah, they had 5.1 surround sound in 1985. I don't think so. Um, it's originally a mono show, but they uh, remixed it for 5.1 surround. Now, that said, it's basically they just remixed the mono to fill the channels decently so that you're not left with everything coming out of the center channel through the whole thing. But um, it seemed like the mix had been done wrong on episode 5 so that actually all the voices all the voices were coming out of the left channel and then the sound effects and music were split between the the left, right and center so it made it first off very distracting and second off almost impossible to hear the voices a lot of the time they just they would get drowned out by everything else so it almost seemed to me like the wrong channel had been assigned to the individual elements so, I mean, normally with a surround mix, you'll have the voices coming out of the center channel, and then the uh, music and sound effects will be the other channels. Um, even in a mono mix, you'll still usually have the, the voices coming out of the center channel, and then the music and sound effects monoral in the left and right, which is how most of the episodes seem to be mixed. I haven't detected any problems with the rest of them. It was just that one episode. Which really struck me as odd, because I, that's actually one of the episodes that I used to have on VHS, so I was surprised that that, that would be a problem. Just a heads up, but as I say, the, the, the issues that there are are very minor, and it really should not deter you from buying the set, because this is the best that Jace has ever looked and sounded, and probably the best it ever will look and sound. So, if you're a fan of the show, don't hesitate to pick this up. And the reason I say don't hesitate is because the way that the DVD world works with sets like these is they have to sell a certain number of units within the first year of the title's release to determine whether or not it's worthwhile to release the rest of it. So this came out in June or no? When the hell did this come? I don't even remember when it came out. It's been out for a few months so don't waste any time. Get it. Because if you waste time, they may not put out the rest of it. All right, It's not that expensive either. It's like 20 or 30 bucks. So it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. Um, another selling point here uh, I should mention. Those of you who are fans of the work of uh, Joe Michael Straczynski, or JMS for those who are in the fan base, fellow who created Babylon 5, who did a lot of stuff for uh, the real Ghostbusters, he was one of the head writers on He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the original series, um, he was the main story editor for Jason the Wheeled Warriors and actually wrote a lot of the episodes. So if you're a fan of his work, you might want to check it out. 
Not to mention there's a lot of other really notable writers on here too. The other thing that I have to say was really cool about the DVD sets that, uh, that I liked, anyway, was uh, the menus. <laughs> yes, the DVD menus. Now they're, they're very simple, functional menus. But, well, here, take a look. This, this is a clip of the menu. Actually, here, let me, let, let me, rather than putting it up here, let me put it up full screen. Take a look. This is the main menu of disc one. Now okay, it's I got moth. On it. Now okay, it's uh, simple, it's functional, but the thing I liked about it is it's like dark and spooky and mysterious. It has like this creepy outer space sound going on, and you're kind of looking into this vortex of black inky space, and it just kind of makes you feel like as soon as you click play. You're going on some dark science fiction journey, you know? <laughs> so I thought that was actually a very interesting choice for the menus. I mean, typically, you'd basically see, you know, you'd hear the theme music or something playing over the menu. But no, kudos to Brian Ward for that menu choice. I thought it was, uh, it was definitely not what I was expecting, but a welcome, unexpected uh, twist. Yeah, so Jason the Wheeled Warriors. Definitely gets uh, my thumbs up. Anyway, Jason the Wheeled Warriors. I think I've showed you the cover enough. You should be able to spot it on the shelf. Um, once again, I had trouble finding this in stores. In fact, I couldn't find it in stores at all and had to special order it through eBay. But if you go through other online retailers, like, I mean, go through somebody reputable on eBay or go through Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Chapters or, well, I don't think Chapters has it. But anyway, I'm sure it can be ordered in for you. Like, actually, we tried to order it into one of the local stores, and they hadn't even, it wasn't even in their catalog. So, hey, Brian, if you're watching, you might want to make sure all the outlets get your, your, your catalog so they could at least include it in their listings, because I think that might uh, adversely affect your sales if you can't get them into the retail outlets, eh? Anyway, Jason the Wheeled Warriors, Volume 1. Definitely worthwhile purchase. A must for every 80s cartoon freak's library. That's it from me to you. Thanks for watching, and until next time... Sayonara. Or should I say, Lightning Strikes! <laughs>